Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 29th of April. Heat wave and power cuts spell nightmare for Indians. Indian students conditionally allowed to return to China after two years of COVID-19 pandemic. And activist urges EU to review Pakistan's GSP plus trading status in wake of rights violations. And now for all the details. An extreme heat has swept across parts of India with temperatures soaring past 40 degrees Celsius for past several days, making life difficult for people while the peak summer heat is still to come. On top of this, the country is also facing its worst electricity shortage in more than six years that has forced many states to resort to power cuts. As India faces the wrath of rising temperatures, residents in Indian capital New Delhi on Friday tried to beat the heat by taking protective measures and keeping themselves hydrated. An extreme heat wave has swept across large parts of India this week and follows the hottest march on record in 122 years. Temperatures have soared past 40 degrees Celsius for several days in New Delhi and are forecast to linger around 44 degrees Celsius until Sunday, with peak summer heat still to come. बहुत दिक्कत का सामना करना पड़ता है सवार या गर्मी के वजह से गाड़ी में नहीं बैठ पा रही है बहुत ज़्यादा दिक्कत हो रही है Meanwhile, India is also facing its worst electricity shortage in more than six years that has forced many states to resort to prolonged power cuts amid the scorching heat. The situation has created a sense of frustration among people. The unprecedented heat puts millions of blue-collar workers at great risk in cities that tend to be warmer than rural areas due to the heat-trapping effect of buildings and other factors. Sunstrokes have claimed thousands of Indian lives over the years. Indian students who are stranded in India following a strict visa ban in China owing to the repeated waves of coronavirus can now return back to rejoin their studies on a need-assessed basis, the Chinese Foreign Ministry has informed. The Embassy of India in China on Friday asked Indian students to provide their information by May 8. There are around 22,000 students currently in India who are enrolled in Chinese universities, mostly studying medicine. They had to head back home when the COVID-19 pandemic broke out in China's Wuhan. This comes as India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar had raised this issue during his meeting with his Chinese counterpart Wang Yi in New Delhi on March 25. India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar visited Bangladesh and Bhutan this week aimed at enhancing bilateral cooperation and exchanging views on key issues. On Thursday, Jay Shankar called on Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and held talks with his Bangladeshi counterpart. His visit was aimed at preparing the grounds for Hasina's visit to India. Jay Shankar arrived in Bhutan on Friday, where he held meetings with the top leadership of the Himalayan Kingdom. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar on Thursday called on Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, who underlined the importance of connectivity between the two neighbours and said that India's landlocked northeastern states can access the country's main seaport, Chittagong port, for the purpose. Jay Shankar, who began a three-day visit to Bangladesh and Bhutan on Thursday, also conveyed Prime Minister Narendra Modi's invitation to PM Hasina to visit India later this year. During the interaction, both the leaders also exchanged views on bilateral, regional and international issues of mutual interest. The foreign minister also met his Bangladeshi counterpart A.K. Abdul Momin and extended him an invitation to attend the next meeting of the Joint Consultative Commission to be held in India prior to the visit of PM Hasina. 
During a joint press interaction with his Bangladeshi counterpart, Jashankar also announced a resuming of cross-border bus and railway services between the two countries shortly after Eid festival. After a brief Dhaka visit, Jashankar arrived in Bhutan on Friday for enhancing bilateral cooperation between the two countries. He was received at the airport by his Bhutanese counterpart, Tandi Dorji. The foreign minister later called on Bhutan's prime minister, Lothi Tsering. The Bhutanese PM in a Twitter post said, I am confident that this visit will foster and reaffirm the exemplary relations Bhutan and India share. The visit is in keeping with the long-established tradition of regular exchange of high-level visits between Bhutan and India, the Bhutan Foreign Ministry said in a statement on Wednesday. Pakistan Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif is on a three-day visit to Saudi Arabia, his first foreign trip since assuming office at the invitation of Saudi Crown Prince. The visit comes at a time when Pakistan faces enormous economic challenges and Sharif is likely to seek financial assistance package from Saudi Arabia. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif on Thursday began his three-day visit to Saudi Arabia at the invitation of Saudi Crown Prince. During the visit, Sharif will be holding bilateral interaction with the Saudi leadership with particular focus on advancing economic, trade and investment ties, according to Pakistan's Foreign Ministry. Sharif is likely to seek $7.4 billion financial assistance package from Saudi Arabia, including rollover of the existing $4.2 billion facilities that are expiring by the end of this year. The new Pakistani government that took over this month from ousted Prime Minister Imran Khan faces enormous economic challenges, predicting the fiscal deficit will exceed 10% of the GDP at the end of the current financial year. The visit comes as Pakistan and the International Monetary Fund have begun technical-level talks to enhance a bailout package from the country from $6 billion to $8 billion. The South Asian nation had sought an increase in the size and duration of a $6 billion IMF program agreed in 2019. Moving on. Prominent Kashmiri activist Jamil Maksud has urged the European Commission to review GSP+, the generalized scheme of preferences status for Pakistan in the wake of ongoing human rights violations in the country. The new GSP scheme is currently being debated in the European Union Parliament as it intends to add more conventions, mainly focusing on human rights, and Pakistan is lobbying to relax conditions which provides preferential treatment for exporting countries. Staging a demonstration in Brussels, Maksud highlighted Pakistan has been undermining fundamental rights of freedom of speech and self-determination in its illegally occupied territories of Pakistan-administered Kashmir and Gilgit-Baltistan. He said voices of political activists and common public are muzzled with force and they are subjected to draconian anti-terror laws for raising even their just concerns. Unfortunately, all those laws which were framed are aimed to framed to protect human rights were used against political activists, dissenting voices, journalists and civil society activists across Pakistan and across in so-called Azad Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan. The minorities are continuously suffering. Amidst the Taliban rule in Afghanistan, where norms discourage women from working outside, a 23-year-old woman has started a tailor shop from her home in southern Kandahar region. Her initiative is providing employment to several other women in her locality. In war-torn Afghanistan, where traditions usually do not encourage women to work outside the home, a 23-year-old woman, Razia, runs a tailor shop in Daman district of Kandahar province and employs 50 women. Razia said that her staff is pleased with the cash they receive from selling the items in the city. Women and girls working in the shop are engaged in embroidery, sewing traditional clothes and making burqa, a veil that covers a woman from head to toe. شرکت می د دې لپاره خاص جوړ کړی دی چې زوم دلته تر دې اندازه هم ډیر زیاتې شزه کار وکړي پرمختګ ورکم in an effort to develop her products razia said she had visited capital kabul twice to put her clothes on display at handicrafts exhibition 
to find more customers. Although women are active in the field of health, education and also business, schoolgirls from grades 7 to 12 have been denied to attend the classes. The United Nations and foreign governments, including Washington, have condemned the Taliban's decision to backtrack on women's rights commitments, such as on girls' education in the months following the takeover in August 2021. Trade unions in Sri Lanka on Thursday went on a mass strike, backing ongoing citizens' protests calling for the government to quit as the country battles the worst economic crisis in decades. They have threatened an ongoing strike from May 6 if President Gotabaya Rajapaksa and the government do not resign. Hundreds of government and private sector trade unions on Thursday representing almost all sectors from transportation to banking held a protest in Sri Lankan capital Colombo, demanding the government's resignation over the worst financial crisis in decades. The country's trade union leaders have threatened an ongoing strike from May 6 if President Gotavaya Rajapaksa and the government do not resign. Scores of employees from state-run banks, most wearing black and carrying black flags, also backed spontaneous protests by citizens around the country that have continued for the past one month. They marched to president's office. Many schools in Colombo were shut and several train stations deserted on Thursday as teachers and train drivers joined mass walkouts. The pandemic, rising oil prices, populist tax cuts and rapidly dwindling foreign currency reserves have left Sri Lanka without enough dollars to pay for vital imports of fuel, food and medicine and have led to soaring inflation. Meanwhile, President Gotabaya Rajapaksa and his elder brother, Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa, have reiterated they won't quit but will rather resolve the crisis. For more than two years, foreigners have been missing from Nepal's tourism scene, kept away by the pandemic, but they are starting to come back as many countries, including Nepal, seek to live with the virus. Nepal, home to eight of the world's 14 highest mountain, including Everest, suspended climbing and trekking activities in early 2020 at the start of the peak summer season because of pandemic. Millions of Nepalese faced economic hardships after a fall in tourism earnings and remittances of its workers. Tamil district, a commercial neighborhood located in Nepal's capital Kathmandu, has been bustling once again with tourists and climbing enthusiasts these last three months. The government is hoping that the trend will continue and that the dollars they bring in will help pay off the country's soaring import bill and prevent a potential economic crisis. In mountain areas of Nepal, home to eight of the world's 14 highest mountains, including Everest, that depend largely on tourism, nearly 80% lost their income during the pandemic. And the tracking ban and about 3,500 tourism-reliant enterprises in the Tamil area of Kathmandu alone closed, according to industry estimates. Officials say the recent arrivals numbers have been helped by a tourism campaign that offers activities such as bungee jumping, paragliding and skydiving in addition to traditional trekking. New tour destinations are also being opened. The landscape, the flowers and especially EU people, the Nepali people, and they are so, so friendly and uh, really, really lovely people. Despite a pickup in earnings, officials say a return to pre-pandemic levels may take time and many tour operators are still worried that another wave of the pandemic, rising airfares and a prolonged Russia-Ukraine war could keep away tourist arrivals in coming months. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.